What should a driver's car actually be or do? Perhaps a subjective topic area and one that I have covered on several occasions on this channel. However, one thing I can be sure about is that I'm not convinced the direction of the car industry is one that actually favours or even produces driver's cars anymore. Surely a driver's car is one which engages the driver both physically and emotionally. I'm sure many of you can relate to the feeling of taking a car right out to red line, grabbing the next gear and doing it all over again. The feeling of the suspension compressing and rebounding to undulations in the road and of course the sensation of the steering wheel wriggling around at your fingertips. Modern cars, although immensely capable, seem to really be losing a lot of that emotional connection. At what point is the power level too high? How much weight is too much weight? Is a driver's car all about stats or more the way it makes you feel? I think I might know the answer to these questions and in this video we're going to take a deeper dive. So here I am back out in my Z4 Coupe then, a car that I'm to be honest absolutely in love with. I've owned it for quite a while now and I've covered many many things on it. I'll link the playlist up here so you can go and check that out if you're interested. So as I've mentioned there's a couple of things then that we really need to think about when it comes to a driver's car and really this is purely my opinion but I think many of you guys will probably agree with it. How much power is too much power is obviously something I've just talked about and really I suppose that ties very much in with the weight figure because with a heavier car you are going to need more power that's just you know that's just fact. Now this Z4 weighs approximately 1350 kilograms and has 265 horsepower so it's not the fastest thing in the world but that's really not what it's about. Being obviously a little bit lighter than the cars we see today you certainly get a better connection with the chassis and it just feels like you're more connected to the road at any given point in time. But to me, I think the sweet spot is really somewhere around that 200 to 300 horsepower per tonne mark, because at that point, you can generally deploy the power to the road fairly easily, but the power isn't so high that everywhere you go, you're just constantly at risk of breaking the speed limits. What I love about this Z4 is I can literally go through the first three gears almost in full and be below motorway speed limits, 70 miles an hour in the UK. And that's fantastic because you can fully ring it out in first and second on a good set of B roads and be below the speed limit. Also, the sound is just incredible. The engine is such an integral part of this car, something I've talked about many times previously. And today, what do we see in cars? Fake engine noise. I just don't get it. It's just totally wrong. As I say, the engine is such an integral part of the car to me. And if you're just purely faking that engine noise, how is that authentic? How is that kind of meant to engage the driver? It's really just a gimmick. So what else then do we think? Well, manual gearboxes, they are disappearing so fast. Virtually every car these days is automatic. Many of those cars are now automatic only. You've only got to look at the lineup from BMW and here in the UK, we simply cannot get manual M cars. Really quite sad when you think about it. But here I've got a six speed manual gearbox, three pedals, Pedals are set up perfectly for heel and toe, which is fantastic too. It just means you've got little things that you can be doing to keep yourself engaged while out on a drive. Of course as well, naturally aspirated engines. This is something I covered in the first episode on this series. I'll link that up here if you want to go and see it. But they're disappearing very, very fast for modern day cars and there really are only a handful that still have them. This Z4 Coupe I'm in has a three litre naturally aspirated straight six. It's the N52B30 unit. 
and it is really just a, a peach to be honest the, the, the way it revs out the throttle response is amazing and that's something that you don't really see that much these days okay so we've covered kind of the key drivetrain things then i just want to come back to the weight because modern day cars are just so inexplicably heavy these days when you know even the average three series is easily 1500 kilograms often a lot more than that it's just everything's just going the wrong way i mean that's only really exacerbated by EVs, which are, you know, near enough two tons, virtually every single one of them. And you've also got to consider what effects that weight has on road surfaces. If a car is extremely heavy, then clearly it's going to cause more wear and tear on those road surfaces. I think we do have to acknowledge that there are a number of fantastic driver's cars still out there today. Just look at the offerings from Porsche, even the latest M cars are brilliant. However, what you've got to consider is the accessibility element. Those cars are so expensive. And obviously with the GT products from Porsche, you have to be the right person to buy one anyway. You can't just go in there as anybody and buy a brand new GT3, for example. Back in the day, there were a lot more offerings out there. I mean, you've only got to look back five years when BMW had the M135i, a rear wheel drive, straight six engined, manual gearbox if you desired. And those cars are about 30 or 35,000 pounds when they were released. And these days, I mean, they don't even make them anymore. So it's just changed so much. And those cars really were paraded as some of the best kind of value for money offerings that BMW had, had produced for a long time. So these days you have to be spending big money really to get into driver's cars. You know, you could be looking at 70,000 pounds and up quite easily. And even if you're going for a hot hatch, maybe like the Honda Civic Type R, for example, that is near enough 40,000 pounds. So I think it's fair to say, although there are a number of fantastic driver's cars out there today, manufacturers have really lost their way and have lost touch with what actually matters. These cars are just purely technological showcases. You see that all the time. You step into these new cars and what is it? It's just screens everywhere and all the latest gimmicks and pieces of technology that realistically people don't need. And I mean, how many people even use them? Ultimately, a driver's car needs to be engaging and it needs to kind of drive that emotional connection between the vehicle and the driver. And sadly, I think those days might be past their best. So why not, you know, buy something older like this? I've covered that many times and it's something that I want to delve into more on this series. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you're new, drop it a like if you've enjoyed it. That's all from me. I'll see you in the next one.